Hello, people on the internet. So a few months ago, I did a drawing study in the gallery, and now I'm going to paint oil over it. In my previous video, you've seen crazy play speeds like 200 times, 500 times, even a thousand times. This video, however, it's going to be more calm and relaxed. So get ready, and let's dive into my thought process during this painting practice. My beloved transparent gesso. Slightly damped brush. Just like how you would stretch a canvas, I used masking tape to stretch this paper. But it didn't work out for me. Maybe because my Dollarama masking tape is too cheap. Wait for our first layer to dry, and it's dry. I sand it down a little bit to make it more smooth for my style of painting. Let's apply our second layer of gesso. This tape is definitely not strong enough. I will try clips next time. Wait for it to dry. Same thing all over again for the third and final layer. Okay, let it dry. Let it dry. Let it dry. Unfortunately, the masking tape to stretch paper method totally flopped. So I can't paint it now. I have to flat it overnight. Let's see if it's uh, flat now. Much better. Still some creases, but I can work with it. I like this color itself, but uh, it will be too creamy to go with the already creamy marble color. I have to make it dark. Would you say a pyramid has no roof or no wall? Here I'm pre-mixing color for the marble bust. I use burnt amber with a touch of yellow ochre and ultramarine for the shadow, and add titanium white as we move towards the mid-tone color. I mix cobalt blue with titanium white and cadmium yellow with titanium white for the highlight areas. The highlight areas are usually more vibrant than the dark areas. I paint shadow areas first, so I can be brave enough to paint mid-tone areas dark as they need to be. We tend to paint portraits too light, especially there is a white of paper to make every color you put on appear darker in comparison. That's also why I painted background first. This is not a rule, but just an approach to help me judge the tones better. 
This lock looking deco thing is too low. I'm going to lift it up. I'm not worrying about the details, nor all the shades in the dark shadow areas. I'm pretty much just applying this one dark layer of slightly muted brown. By muted brown, I mean less chroma. Here, I got carried away and started painting hair textures. I caught myself doing it, I told myself to stop and to pay more attention to get the forms right first. I then moved on to the light and midtone areas. Although I've spent a lot of time on getting the Pope's eyes expression during the pencil drawing stage, it's still not there. So I'm correcting and making changes here again. In a way, I'm still drawing, not painting. Sell imitation money is maybe the only legal way to sell fake money for real money. Luckily this time, I think I nailed it. This is the gaze I was talking about. His eyes are raised, creating soft wrinkles across his forehead. His gaze is steady and far-reaching, focused beyond the viewer towards eternity. And that's what I want to capture as well. So. There are parallel universes, where this video doesn't exist. There are also parallel universes, where this video was made by you, not me. I mixed a little bit of ultramarine blue to the shadow color and a little bit of gray as well just to kill the chroma to apply on the cheekbones to reintroduce the surrounding colors to our main object so what's in the painting will be more in harmony and interact with each other like it's actually there If 99% of people find you unattractive Still, 78 million people find you attractive. When people talk about traveling to the past, they worry about radically changing the present by doing something small. But barely anyone in the present really thinks that they can radically change the future by doing something small. After I got a decent amount of details for Pope's face, I moved on to paint Pope's robe. Initially, I didn't want to add too much detail to the robe. I thought it's good to have more emphasis on the face. That's how portraits usually are, so viewers can have a clear focus. Plus, I just want to go play Minecraft. So I was afraid that's just an excuse for me being lazy. And actually, in this case, the detailed deco on Pope's robe is a symbol for his power and wealth. I shall paint a decent amount of details for his robe too. The platypus and the actinar are the only two animals that produce both eggs and milk giving them the unique ability to make their own custard. This area looks too flat. In order to show it's actually curving back, I shall clarify light and mid-tone areas here more. 
In the wizard world, rappers would be the hardest to battle. Imagine how fast they can cast multiple spells. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with this five-hour-long study. I leave my color palette on there for future reference, also to cover some palm marks I made during the painting. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure subscribe and leave a like. I will see you in the next video.